HAC13, Richie Repenter here. Now, I got a message here that my challenge the foundations of a lot of believers. So I'm going to preface it like this. How are you going to believe what everybody else believes just because they made something up that the sacrifice on a cross of Jesus forgives you for your sin? That's absolutely ridiculous and almost satanic, and you're just following like a herd of idiots. In the ministry of Jesus, he taught people to repent of their sin, and he claimed that he had the power to forgive sins, and that is the core of the ministry. He had the power to forgive sins on earth without dying on a cross. He didn't have to die on a cross so that sins could be forgiven. I've always thought it was ridiculous, and people just blindly believe it. No, Jesus was saying that men can forgive other men their sins, teaching to do such a thing, and taking away the judgment of the rule of murder for sinners on the church, that people could live and change their ways instead of having to live in fear. There was confession involved too. Yeah, but how are you going to confess a sin that you've done that could be heinous to somebody who's going to judge you and possibly put you to death? So there's the betrayal in the garden as well, where Jesus gets betrayed by Judas and he brings soldiers to him and they take him off and they go put him into court. Someone gets their ear lopped off in the story. And Jesus says not to do this thing and heals the ear. Believing in the healings is great, isn't it? What about believing in doing the message to actually go out and preach? Jesus was known as a fire starter, right? I came to bring flames on this earth, to set the earth on fire. And oh, how I wish it was already kindled. His issue was with the religious people at the time because he was in the marketplaces he was in the streets he was in the houses of people he was doing work for god and promising people wages of a hundred times what they left behind if they would join him houses lands families and eternal life for the service of god but judas is said to have betrayed him for money 30 pieces of silver, which would have been roughly enough to buy a field. You had to leave everything behind to be one of Jesus' disciples. You couldn't have your own possessions. You would have to give them to him or give them away. You had to forsake them all for him. So if we look at any record of these disciples, had they actually gotten the reward that Jesus promises, or maybe someone has altered the texts to change the whole story. Jesus could be an absolute fiction just made up for people to believe like most of these other religions. When we think about the religions, how can there be one right religion? How do we know that they're not all right? What if they're all wrong? These people are playing make-believe. Now there are a lot of historical accounts from the Jews. So Jesus and his story might be an actual historical account because they had a law not to bear false witness. That was part of their social culture so that they would not be liars. But what I'm trying to get across is if you believe that Jesus died for your sins and that you can be forgiven and go to heaven, you are ridiculously deceived. You have the powers to forgive sins on the earth because some man went around saying that your sins are forgiven. There was no need for a cross sacrifice to do that. What part of their doctrine makes you think that God had to kill somebody so that you can be forgiven for your sin? No, he went to the cross so that his disciples could t carry on his message. When he died on that cross, his disciples were not brought there with him to be killed, like a band of revolutionaries would have been killed.